Municipal Act to allow municipalities that were amalgamated to create new bylaws. And there's many bylaws, this one only being one. When I say this one, it wasn't this order, it was bylaw 2004 that they passed that was founded on the Municipal Act Amendment of 2001. They must have made some mistakes or errors in that 2004 bylaw because Howard Gregg again signed a new bylaw to replace the 2004 bylaw in 2006. The only substantive change to the 2006 bylaw was the addition in definition, under the definition category, which consists of about a page and a half, they added a definition of owner, and they de added the definition of person. And those have very significant legal ramifications. Farmers have been listening now for well over a decade of this idea of stewardship. We have stewardship <laughs> programs. We're stewards of the land. We're all into stewardship. And so this is a, a, a trend that is changing the concept of ownership. And you only have to read their definition of owner in this bylaw to realize that they're moving us into a stewardship category where we're keeping, taking care of their property on their terms. So with that bit of a background, I'll read the order that the lady that just was here and left uh, prepared from those foundational documents of the amendment to the Municipal Act in 2001 and the bylaw that Howard Gregg signed for a second time in 2006. George, can I just interrupt you? Sorry. Just a quick thing. And it just happened that we talked about that. Talk about weapons and fighting them and so on. Number one, no violence. Number one. Number two, these are the weapons we have. And they are very powerful. Videos, everybody should always have a video or a camera with them. Because that's the only way how you can actually get to the public to show them what's going on. No other way. Even in court, you know, you say one thing, then they say the other thing. Don't argue it. This is how it happened. The truth. And that is why it is so important that whenever there's a critical situation, these cameras are not that expensive. But it's probably the cheapest investment you have. Jim, you need one. You need one. Get the cheapest you have, but you have it right there. They can't do anything about it. You have the right to film them. Okay? Thank you. And that was a very, very powerful tool for us when they raided us. Because they begged me, when they brought the equipment back, they begged me not to film them. And we had three cameras running behind the bushes, so... <laughs> <laughs> did you, Michael, did you beg them not to film you when they took it? <laughs> they didn't have any camera. Oh, they, they had. That's right. They had. And they wouldn't stop, would they? No. 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 There's a, in addition uh, to this, there's a very uh, fundamental concept that we've lost, I think, our society. And that's the concept of privacy. The older generation here is familiar with the concept of the private sector and the public sector. And people that got involved in public office, they became an open book. <coughs> and they lost their privacy. But we see increasingly these days that those roles are changing. And I think it's changing because we as a people don't appreciate the power that privacy provides. And increasingly we notice that our governments are becoming increasingly secretive and private. <laughs> They're not disclosing what they do, and they are, through the technology of today, turning us into a public open book. Well, they become and it's, private. And it's very dangerous, <laughs> because the power shift from the people to governments and these institutions that are stealing, really, our privacy is enormous. Anyway, I'll read this order to comply that was mailed on July, or it was dated July 28th, and it was to be responded to uh, on or before August 15th, and uh, the repairs required here uh, were to be completed by August 20th. 
uh, pretty unrealistic. You'll notice that this letter basically focuses solely on, it's all about the money. It's all about taxation, and taxation is becoming, uh, will become an increasing burden with absolutely no escape. It is sacrosanct that you pay, we've been told for years. There's two things in life, death and taxes. Our municipalities are being strangled by the reduction in transfer payments from the province. Is being stra uh, strangled again by reductions in transfer payments from the federal government and the central bank. And so now our municipalities are turning against their own populations that they're supposed to represent in search for funding. No, but I'm just giving a little background. So I'll get to the order. It is to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, James Andrew Normus Wilson and Ruby Ann Beatrice Wilson. It is contravention of bylaw number 20622, subject property as described above. It has come to our attention by way of inspection that your property is in violation of our refuse and debris bylaw number 20622. Upon inspection of your property on July 19, 2008, I found the above mentioned property to not, in big book capital letters, be in compliance with the said bylaw. I have set out the requirement, the required repairs and maintenance to bring this property into compliance under Schedule A attached here too. You will be required to complete the necessary repairs and maintenance on or before August 20th, 2008. However, should you disagree with any aspect of this order, you may inform Council in writing of your desire to make submissions before Council to address your concerns. Council must receive your submission on or before August 15, 2008. Be further advised that, you, that should you not comply with this order, under Section 1 of the Municipal Act, 201, the municipality has full authority to carry out all necessary work to bring your property into compliance with the said bylaw and all associated costs will be charged against the property in question as set out under Section 610A and Section 610B below. Section 610A reads, The township shall have a lien on the subject property for the costs under subsection 6.7 and 6.A of the refuse and debris by law, and the amount shall be deemed to be municipal real property taxes. So this is a mechanism to increase taxation. Section 610B, all fees, charges, interest charges, and other penalties and collection costs incurred by the township may be added to the municipal treasurer, may be added by the municipal treasurer to the collector's roll and collected in the same manner and with the same priorities as municipal real property taxes. Penalty under Section 8.1 of the Refuse and Debris Bylaw states that any person or corporation who contravenes a provision of this bylaw is guilty of an offense and upon conviction is liable to a fine as provided under the Provincial Effectances Act, which is now overseen by the county. Failure to comply that with... Does say that in there? No, or you just but that's it? what it oh. is. That was a change. It's okay. a change now where we are... Uh, forcing our municipalities to plunder their people. Failure to comply with this order may result in you being charged with the offenses as set out under Schedule A attached. Should you wish to review the refuse and debris bylaw, please contact the Township of Chatsworth office at the telephone number indicated above. Well, I think that's what we uh, pointed out here today, that we want to review it. I think there's been a number of requests for it lately, and so 